proved it. And they don't even know how that happened. Yeah. And there's not some made up stuff, but we have videos to prove all the stuff that we're talking about. I come from a nation called India. You have the richest of rich and you have the poorest of poor people in the nation of India. But the Lord prospered us even in a nation like India and gave us more than enough to do everything that we had to do for the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. But I'll tell you this, uh, uh, Evangelist Reinhard Bonnke actually caught, you know, he, I caught his interest when I was about probably 13 years old, 12, 13 years old. And uh, he said to me, God's going to use you to shake India and America in a powerful way. And uh, he believed in my ministry because I came to the ministry as about 12 years old. Because I was actually in my school and we were sitting down with my teacher and everybody else and we were having our test. And suddenly I heard the audible voice of God that spoke to me and said, the harvest is plenty and the laborers are few. And I could hear nothing else but those words repeated to me over and over and over again. And then I knew for a fact that God was calling me into the ministry. And at the age of 12, I actually left my school and began to serve the Lord at the age of 12. And I started to travel and preach. And, you know, now, almost 15, 16 years later, the Lord's blessed us so much, we've had over 7.25 million decisions to Christ in the nation of India. Wow. Wow. people in one single night. The last crusade we did before the lockdowns happened, we had 300,000 people every single night. Our volunteers meeting had 10,000 people in it. It's bigger than most people's crusades. And then not only that, we had over one point, I think 1.2 or 1.3 million people saved in one week. So we see the hand of God in this well, the gospel is free, but it actually requires money to preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes. People think, you know, you come, we go around America to preach and everything is free. It actually isn't. Mm -hmm. If I'll tell you this, and for the glory of God, I mean, you can ask the pastors of this church. But we didn't ask them one thing to come to their city. We never asked for an honorary. We didn't ask for a flight tickets to be paid for. We didn't ask for our hotels. We didn't ask for my team's food. We didn't ask for one single thing. We came here paying our own way. Paying our own stay, paying our own flights, paying everything ourselves and coming here to preach. And not only that, we put our money into advertising this meeting, putting up billboards, doing whatever that we could do to get the word out to every single one of you that's sitting here tonight. And what most people don't realize is that we've spent over $30,000 just on this meeting from our ministry. Are you listening? Yeah. So we haven't come here to take one thing from you. People are like, well, this is all about an offering. If you weren't about, about an offering, then I didn't receive one offering last night. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So what are you talking about offering? Most people are like, oh, they come to receive offerings. Sometimes the offerings suck so bad yes. wow. <laughs> that we can't pay for one thing. Yes. Thankfully, men are not our source. God is our source. Yeah. Yeah. So even if you don't give tonight, the Lord will still bless us and give us, take care of every need of ours to do what we have to do for America. Amen. And I was in the middle of a mass crusade when I was in India and had thousands of people in front of me. And the Lord spoke to me and asked me a question. The crowd that you see in front of you, do you believe I can do this very thing in the nation of the United States of America? I took a second. Nah, get you. <laughs> well, Lord, you can do anything. Uh -huh. And the Lord spoke to me and said that I want you to go to America and preach my gospel. Mm. And I said to the Lord, Lord, why me? Mm. I mean, things are going pretty great out here in India. Why would I want to leave this and go to America? Yeah. And the Lord spoke to me and said to me, do you remember every time, I, you know, I always talk to my, my staff, you know, in our staff meetings in India, I'd always tell them, listen, the Lord told me to leave India and go to another country, start all over again. I would do it in a heartbeat. Mm. I say that to, to them all the time. The Lord spoke to me and said, well, you remember the time you sat with your staff and you said that to them? I'll take you up on it. 
Yeah. <laughs> Be careful what you say. And I said, okay. Then I left India and came down America and began to do crusades here. Now we've almost done over 16 crusades in the United States, paying our own money and reaching as many people as we can. And But let me tell you, it, it wasn't always like that for us. As an evangelist, while growing up, we were actually taught that an evangelist is just supposed to live day to day and just have debt when he does every crusade that he does. That we're not supposed to have enough for ourselves, we're supposed to struggle through our lives and have nothing, and that's just how your life is supposed to be. And as much as that man as Reinhard Bonnke taught me about crusades and 